fellow Southern Cameroonians, sympathizers of our cause for freedom, fellow citizens of the world. I'd like to begin by thanking the organizers of this important international conference immensely for their time and sacrifice, for their commitment to the cause of peace in the UN Trust territory of Southern Cameroons, Africa, and the entire world. Peace which can only return between the Cameroons to the promotion of truth, justice, and freedom. This conference provides a unique opportunity for all and sundry to look at the facts in the face, as facts are secret. So we all come to the realization that what is happening to the people of the UN Trust Territory of Southern Cameroons simply represents the refusal of the global community to uphold the rule of law on the global space and total negligence of commonly agreed to principles like the never against principle if they were implemented without fear or favor. This would make the world a better place to live in for all and sundry. It is not by error that I am referring to our homeland as a UN Trust Territory of Southern Cameroons. I am neither taking us back to the colonial days nor attempting to say we are in 1961. I am merely reminding all of us taking part at this conference of the reality that we are here today because the United Nations is here to complete its job in our country. If our people are dying in huge numbers daily, it is because the project to decolonize the Southern Cameroons was abandoned along the way. We are here because in 1961, the United Nations simply changed our colonial master rather than granting us the freedom that the General Assembly recommended in several resolutions. Yes, the United Nations packaged us like a parcel and handed over to President Amadou Ahijo of neighboring La Republique du Cameroon as a present, as best and as slaves at worst. The walls of the people of the UN Trust Territory of Southern Cameroons in the hands of La Republique du Cameroon began just 20 days after the so-called reunification, and that was to signal rough days ahead. On October 20, 1961, President Aijo signed a decree reorganizing the federal territory into six administrative regions, including West Cameroon, and appointed a federal inspector for each region who was to report to the federal president. That provoked discontent among Southern Cameroonians because West Cameroon, as we were called at the time, could not at the same time be a federated state equal in status with East Cam Cameroon, according to the Constitution, and be an administrative region by decree. Worse, the federal inspector had more power than the elected prime minister of West Cameroon, and he showed it daily by humiliating members of the federal government and the parliament with impunity. Ahijo installed a system of divide and rule meant to turn our people against one another, giving him the possibility to better humiliate and dehumanize us. He abolished multi-party democracy, which was the hallmark of the Southern Cameroons. This was the start of several years of complaints and repression until the tipping point was attained on January 17, 2017, with the banning of the Cameroon Anglophone Civil Society Consortium, the Southern Cameroon's National Council, the suppression of internet signals all over the territory of the UN Trust Territory of Southern Cameroons, the arrest of leaders of the consortium, and the launch of a manhunt of all other influential members of both organizations. In 1993, a tripartite conference was summoned to examine the teething problems of the country. Here, the Southern Cameroon's delegation suggested a return to the two-state federation as existed in 1961 as a palliative to the numerous problems we were facing in the Union. In reaction, the ruling Betty clan rather threatened to ask for a Betty state that center south and east if Southern Cameroonians continue to talk about federation. This was a clear signal that federalism will never again be on the table as far as the Republic of Cameroon was concerned. The failure of the Tripartite Conference to discuss a lasting solution pushed Southern Cameroonians, who had previously held a conference in January 1993 in Boya, that was the AAC, to summon another conference in 1994. At the All-Anglophone Conference too, the narrative changed. The people decided a return to the roots by refusing and rejecting the dubious appellation Anglophones. 
That is how the Southern Cameroon's National Council, the SCNC, was born, with a mandate to either force a return to the two-state federation or ignite the independence restoration quest after a reasonable time frame. That time frame has elapsed. The response from Yaoundé was one of refusal to recognize the SCNC, which has been outlawed several times, and it preferred to tack adherents as secessionists who rather deserve crackdowns and not consideration. Sometimes we are even called terrorists. Two peoples, two nations, two destinies. Events in the Cameroons lately have demonstrated beyond reasonable doubts that we are two peoples with two different destinies and that we would never really make it together in whatsoever form of union. Evidence of this lies in the total indifference shown by people across the river Mungo in the face of the ongoing carnage being visited on our people, a people they once referred to as brethren. In some cases, outright calls have been made for us to be completely annihilated while Jacques Zay and Ernest Obama, journalists at Vision Card Television in Yaoundé, see us as roaches, cockroaches, deserving simply to be wiped out, politician Bandakani has expressed total disappointment at his government because that government has not used the kind of military techniques that he believes would serious weaponry to completely delete every single one of us from the surface of the earth. These utterances have never been condemned, but Southern Cameroonians are being shot, killed, tortured, humiliated, and traumatized beyond proportions for merely, for merely asking for freedom. As if that was not enough, the Francophone-dominated parliament has outlawed any mention of the Southern Cameroon's question under the ongoing genocide in their premises. Also, the action of the government when a few houses were burned down in Banguren a village in the noon division of the west region of La Republic of Cameroon could not have translated this message much better. Countless government officials visited with relief assistance, financial and material aid to reconstruct. No such action has been seen in southern Cameroons where over 400 village communities and counting are being completely reduced to ashes by their military implementing a scorched earth policy. On the contrary, soldiers have been seen chasing internally displaced persons right into the forest and killing them with impunity. Last but not least, street demonstrations organized by the opposition MRC party of Maurice Camto on September 22, 2020, saw soldiers and police firing at protesters only on regions of their bodies that could incapacitate them just temporarily. In southern Cameroons, all such protests have resulted to deaths right from May 6, 1990, during the launch of the SDF party in Bermenda. While Mancho Bibixi has been handed a 13-year jail term for leading a social protest that demanded better living conditions, protesters who threw stones at the police for the same reasons at the Yaoundé Central Market in December 2018 all went home with neither questioning nor a scratch. The reality right now is that our people are being dragged like sheep and slaughtered in tens, twenties, thirties, and so on by soldiers who see us more like game on whom they can practice how to shoot. In several localities like Bali, some 15 kilometers away from Bermenda, people are now used to seeing multiple corpses flowing downstream in rivers, obviously from the previous night's shooting sprees. While a clear count puts the number of deaths this far at well over 35 Thousand. Those who are in denial that a genocide is unfolding in our land continue to maintain the figure at 3,000 since 2019, despite coming out every now and then to condemn mass killings. The figures don't change. In lieu and place of the never again policy, prominent world powers now prefer the slogan territorial integrity of Cameroon. I like to state here unequivocally that not a single Southern Cameroonian is interested in violating the territorial, the territorial integrity of La Republic du Cameroon. This is why we are only asking Mr. Paul Bia to withdraw his army of occupation from our country. The world knows where the boundaries of La Republic du Cameroon begin and end, 
and where those of the UN Trust Territory of Southern Cameroon take over. The African Union took over from the Organization of African Unity and thus inherited the principle adopted at independence in 1960, not 1961, that every member country respects its boundaries as acquired at independence. I'm referring to the principle of uti possidetis juris. This made territorial expansion illegal and a violation of international law. I am convinced that no one here is in doubt that La Republique du Cameroon achieved its independence on January 1, 1960, and the UN Trust Territory of Southern Cameroons was not part of it. I know we all recall that La Republique du Cameroon voted against the independence of the UN Trust Territory of Southern Cameroons on April 21, 1960, or rather 1961. Today, we all understand why. Pretending that our territory belongs to La Republique du Cameroon is like saying the UN Special Envoy who traveled to Yaoundé in 2010 to hand Mr. Bia two separate maps of the Cameroons when that country was marking 50 years of independence was out of his mind. Let us have the audacity to be serious and show mercy to a people facing annihilation. have long drowned the voices of people like myself of the civil society organizations transforming our constant pleas against the taking up of arms in response to Yaoundé's brutality into sour music in 1961 as world powers discussed the need to end colonial rule in most African countries the fate of the people of southern Cameroon was hanging in the balance but after several consultations and series of votes at the United Nations, the then U.S. ambassador to the United Nations, I'm referring to Mr. Zablowski, warned. The USA had voted for Resolution 1350 and still finds its provisions satisfactory. The USA congratulates the people of the Southern Cameroons for their accession to autodetermination as it constitutes the will of the population who want to run its affairs democratically. The government and the opposition parties of the Southern Cameroons, unfortunately, have not come to an agreement. However, there is no reason to deny the population of the Southern Cameroons a brief. The result of a hurried choice imposed on the population of the Trust Territory will be catastrophic for their political future. This statement is just as true today as it was in 1961. At that time, the world powers denied Southern Cameroonians outright independence on grounds that the territory will not have enough resources to self-sustain. Today, these same powers have been seen trying again to deny Southern Cameroonians self-determination, but this time on grounds that letting them go would render the neighboring La Republique du Cameroon totally impoverished because Southern Cameroon holds all by itself some 60% of the GDP in the current field union. What a paradox. What a world. Thank you.